I'm here at St. Stephen's Catholic Church in Portland, Oregon. Today is the fifth day in our novena to Our Lady of the Rosary, and we continue with St. Louis de Montfort's The Secret of the Rosary. We're going to skip ahead to the eighth rose today, the marvels of the rosary. It would hardly be possible for me to put into words how much Our Lady thinks of the Holy Rosary and of how she vastly prefers it to all other devotions. Neither can I sufficiently express how highly she rewards those who work to preach the devotion to establish it and spread it, nor, on the other hand, how firmly she punishes those who work against it. All during life, St. Dominic had nothing more at heart than to praise Our Lady, to preach her greatness, and to inspire everybody to honor her by saying her rosary. As a reward, he received countless graces from her, exercising her great power as Queen of Heaven, she crowned his labors with many miracles and prodigies. Almighty God always granted him what he asked through Our Lady. The greatest honor of all was that, he helped, that she helped him crush the Albigensian heresy and made him the founder and patriarch of a great religious order. And as for blessed Alan de la Roche, who restored the devotion to the rosary, he received many privileges from Our Lady. She graciously appeared to him several times to teach, to teach him how to work out his salvation, to become a good priest and perfect religious, and how to pattern himself on our Lord. He used to be horribly tempted and persecuted by devils, and then deep sadness would fall upon him, and sometimes he used to be near to despair. But Our Lady always comforted him by her sweet presence, which banished the clouds of darkness from his soul. She taught him how to say the rosary, explaining its value and the fruits to be gained by it, and gave him a great and glorious privilege, the honor of being called her new spouse. As a token of her chaste love for him, she placed a ring upon his finger and a necklace made of her own hair about his neck and gave him a rosary. Father Tritem, Cartagena, and Martin of Navarre, both very learned men, and others as well have spoken of him in terms of the highest praise. Blessed Alan died at Zunol in Flanders, September 8th, 1475, after having brought over 100,000 people into the Confraternity. So September 8th is the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Blessed Thomas of St. John was well known for his sermons on the Most Holy Rosary, and the devil, jealous of the success he had with souls, tortured him so much that he fell ill and was sick so long that the doctors gave him up. One night, when he really thought he was dying, the devil appeared to him in the most horrible form imaginable. There was a picture of Our Lady near his bed. He looked at it and cried with all his heart and soul and strength, Help me! Save me, my sweet, sweet mother. Well, no sooner had he said this than the picture seemed to come alive, and Our Lady put out her hand, took him by the arm, and said, Do not be afraid, Thomas, my son. Here I am, and I am going to save you. Get up now and go on preaching my rosary as you used to do. I promise to shield you from your enemies. When Our Lady said this, the devil fled, and Blessed Thomas got up, finding that he was in perfect health. He then thanked the Blessed Mother with tears of joy. He resumed his rosary apostolate, and his sermons were marvelously successful. Our Lady blesses not only those who preach her rosary, but she highly rewards all those who get others to say it by their example. Alphonsus, the king of Leon and Galicia, Galicia very much wanted all his servants to honor the Blessed Virgin by saying the rosary. So he used to hang a large rosary on his belt and always wore it. But unfortunately, he never said it himself. Nevertheless, his wearing it encouraged his courtiers to say the rosary very devoutly. One day the, fell, the king fell seriously ill, and when he was given up for dead, he found himself in a vision before the judgment seat of our Lord. Many devils were there, accusing him of all the sins he had committed, and our Lord, as sovereign judge, was just about to condemn him to hell. When Our Lady appeared to intercede for him, she called for a pair of scales 
and had his sins placed in one of the balances, whereas she put the rosary that he had always worn on the other scale, together with all the rosaries that had been said because of his example. It was found that the rosaries weighed more than his sins. Looking at him with great kindness, Our Lady said, As a reward for this little honor that you paid me in wearing my rosary, I have obtained a great grace for you from my son. Your life will be spared for a few more years. See that you spend these years wisely and do penance. Well, when the king regained consciousness, he cried out, Blessed be the rosary of the most blessed Virgin Mary, by which I have been delivered from eternal damnation. After he had recovered his health, he spent the rest of his life in spreading devotion to the Holy Rosary and he said it faithfully every day. People who love the Blessed Virgin ought to follow the example of King Alphonsus and that of the saints whom I have mentioned so that they too may win other souls for the confraternity of the Holy Rosary. They will then receive great graces on earth and eternal life later on. They that explain me shall have life everlasting. That is a quote from Ecclesiasticus, chapter 24, 31, also known as the book of Sirach. And there we have the eighth rose, according to St. Louis de Montfort, in the secret of the rosary. And now let us pray our novena prayer for the fifth day. And you can find a printout of the novena prayers a uh, link for the printout uh, in the description beneath this video. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. The Prayer of the Novena. Immaculate Heart of Mary, my mother, I come to you this day as a little child in prayer. I beg to make this offering of my heart as simple and childlike as I can. The three little ones of Fatima have taught us what it is that pleases your maternal heart. I earnestly desire that all the people of the world be brought back to a humble knowledge and love of the Sacred Heart of your dear Son. I pray, dear Mother of my God, that the indescribable beauty and the glow-white purity of your own Immaculate Heart may so captivate our souls that we will detest all sin and dedicate our lives to the honor and glory of the God who created us. As much as I feel the need of many things, I do not dare in this novena, Mother Mary, to ask one selfish petition for myself. You revealed the secrets of your own sad heart at Fatima and begged for the restoration of the world to God. What can I ask of greater good than to unite my heart to yours in this great yearning? What can I add but the fervent prayer that all the world may listen to your pleading? I give my heart to you, my heavenly queen, and in utmost confidence, I leave to you the choice of what is best for me in answer to my prayer of love and reparation. Our Lady of the Rosary of Fatima, I give you my heart. Our Lady of the Rosary of Fatima, I put my trust entirely in you. Immaculate heart of the mother of my God, we implore through your powerful intercession, the conversion of the hearts of men complete victory over sin, and the return of peace which you have promised. And the prayer to Our Lady of Fatima. O Queen of the Holy Rosary, sweet Lady of Fatima, who has deigned to appear in the land of Portugal and has restored peace at home and abroad to this country once in such turmoil, we beseech thee, look graciously upon our dear land and by thy power raise it from the depths to which it has fallen and re-establish it in spiritual and moral strength. Bring back peace also to all the peoples of the earth, so that all nations, especially our own, may rejoice to hail thee as their queen and as the queen of peace. Amen. Our Lady of the Rosary, pray for our country. Our Lady of Fatima, obtain for humanity a lasting peace. Sweetheart of Jesus, be my love. Sweetheart of Mary, be my salvation. And today we pray the prayer for the fifth day on the fires of hell. O Mary Immaculate, merciful Mother, it is sad that you must remind us of the pains of hell. The vision that you gave the little ones was really meant for us. 
spare us from the judgment that proclaims eternal loss. Stir up in our hearts so strong and lively a faith that we may keenly realize the meaning of this awesome, this undeniable truth. We know from the teaching of His Holy Writ that the malice of sin will be justly met by an everlasting punishment. I believe in the infinite justice of the one true God. I believe in the infinite love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe, I beg the grace that I may so live my life that I may be worthy through the merits of Jesus Christ to enjoy the reward of his all-merciful heart. Amen. Our Lady, the Rosary of Fatima, impress upon our minds the reality of the flames of hell and deliver us from their burning touch. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. We'll join us tomorrow for the sixth day in our novena to Our Lady the Rosary. And don't miss a day of prayer with us. <laughs>